Speaking section. The speaking section tests your ability to communicate in English in an academic setting. During the test, you will be presented with four speaking questions. The questions ask for a response to a single question, a talk, or a lecture. The prompts and questions are presented on time. You may take notes as you listen, but notes are not graded. You may use your notes to answer the questions. Some of the questions ask for a response to a reading passage and a talk or a lecture. The reading passages and the questions are written, but the directions will be spoken. Your reading will be evaluated on both the fluency of the language and the accuracy of the content. You will have 15 to 20 seconds to prepare and 45 to 60 seconds to respond to each question. Typically, a good response will require all of the response time and the answer will be complete by the end of the response time. You will have about 17 minutes to complete the speaking section. A clock on the screen will show you how much time you have to prepare each of your answers and how much time you have to record each response. You will now be asked a question about a familiar topic. After you hear the question you will have 15 seconds to plan your response and 45 seconds to speak. Do you agree or disagree that children should be required to take music lessons? You will now read a short passage and then listen to a conversation on the same topic you will then be asked a question about the passages after you hear the question you will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak you have 45 seconds to read the passage below. Did you hear about the major schedule change they're implementing next semester? For day week, longer classes, the whole shebang. Yeah, I saw the email. Honestly, I'm torn. Part of me is excited, four-day weekends sound amazing, and those flex hours could be really helpful for catching up on work. Same. But I'm worried about the longer classes. Eight hours of straight lectures sounds brutal, and I don't know if I could focus that long. Remember how Professor Kim's to our classes felt like an eternity sometimes? That's a good point. But maybe with better breaks in between and more interactive teaching methods, it could be okay. Plus, think about the benefits. Those free Fridays would be incredible for catching up on sleep, working on projects, or even just having some me time. That's true. And maybe having fewer days will actually help us focus better during the classes we do have. But I still have reservations about losing those extra days even if they were sometimes stressful. At least I could squeeze in an extra gym session or a club meeting. I see your point. Maybe the best approach is to try it out first and see how it goes. Who knows, it might actually be really beneficial for student life overall. Yeah, you're right. We'll just have to wait and see how it plays out. Maybe in a few months, we'll be praising the four-day week. The man expresses his opinion about the proposal described in the letter. Briefly summarize the proposal. 
then state his opinion about the proposal and explain the reasons he gives for holding that opinion. You will now read a short passage and then listen to a lecture on the same topic. You will then be asked a question about the passage. After you hear the question you have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. You have 45 seconds to read the passage below. You may begin reading now. Hello everyone. Today we're going to learn about the amazing world of glowing creatures in the ocean. This cool thing is called bioluminescence. Let's talk about a little sea creature called copepod. When it gets scared, it twinkles with light. You might think it's asking for help, but it's actually a clever way to escape from bigger animals. The sudden burst of light disorients predators, allowing the copepod to make a swift escape. Take a detour to meet the enigmatic anglerfish a true illusionist of the deep sea. This fish uses its radiant lure to attract prey in the inky blackness of the ocean depths, turning the darkness into its hunting ground. Yet, not all luminescence serves a defensive or predatory purpose. Consider the lanternfish, for instance. When they navigate the ocean together, they use their bioluminescent abilities to communicate and coordinate movements. Their synchronized flashing creates mesmerizing patterns of light, an underwater ballet of sorts. In summary, the world of bioluminescence is a spectacle of light in the ocean's darkness. It's a survival tool, a hunting strategy, and a means of communication for many marine creatures. From the tiny copepod's defensive flashes to the anglerfish's deceptive lure and the lanternfish's coordinated light shows, Bioluminescence illuminates the fascinating, intricate, and often unseen world beneath the ocean's surface. Based on the professor's example of the copepod and anglerfish, explain how light production in different organisms can serve opposing purposes within the same ecosystem.
You will now listen to part of a lecture, you will then be asked a question about it after you hear the question you will have 20 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. Good day everyone. Today we're exploring the fascinating world of ecosystem services. These are the benefits that nature provides to humans, which contribute to our well-being and survival. Let's look at two examples of ecosystem services. Consider the pollination service first. Bees, butterflies, and other pollinators perform this important service. These creatures accidentally transfer pollen as they move from flower to flower in search of nectar, facilitating plant fertilization. This process is critical for the growth of fruits and seeds. The abundance of these plant products, which are high in essential nutrients, ensures that humans have a varied and nutritious food supply. Our agricultural systems and food sources would be severely harmed if pollination services were not provided. Let us now turn our attention to the water purification service. Nature has its own water treatment system, and wetlands play an important role in it. Wetlands act as natural filters, collecting and damaging pollutants in the water. This natural purification process improves water quality and contributes to the overall health of aquatic ecosystems. And what's the end product of this ecosystem service? Clean water. A resource so fundamental yet so critical for human consumption agriculture and various industrial processes. In conclusion, these examples demonstrate the critical role of ecosystem services in human well-being and survival. The buzzing bees and the calm wetlands are not just elements of nature, they are silent warriors, ensuring our survival through pollination and water purification services. This is the power and the importance of nature, the provider of ecosystem services, the bedrock of human survival. Using points and examples from the lecture, explain two ways that ecosystem services contribute to human well-being and survival. 